ceramic loaded mashed potatoes, which have all the flavor and the fixins that are in loaded potatoes, but they are silky smooth and they just melt in your mouth and they're just like a little rich and buttery and they're just, whew, they're like loaded mashed potatoes, but even better. If you're enjoying this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button below and click the bell icon to be notified every time I post a new and delicious recipe. The first step in mashed potatoes is obviously cooking your potatoes. I like to use gold potatoes for my mashed potatoes. You can certainly use russets. Um, they're a little starchier. I just, it's just a little different. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and peel my potatoes. You do not have to peel your potatoes, especially when you're russets, yes. But uh, gold potatoes or you know, kind of standard red potatoes, you don't need to peel those. And then as I finish peeling it, I'm gonna pop it in my pot. And that's it. I'm just gonna peel, peel, peel. If you are doing a lot of potatoes, then you can, you could put them into water, like cold water, to keep them from browning. These aren't gonna brown that fast, uh, nor are they gonna sit for very long, so I'm not gonna stress about that. Um, but, so everything is in my pot. I'm gonna go ahead and get all of these little scraps onto my parchment, and then I'm going to take this and pluck it. Now, you can see they're in here. I'm gonna go ahead and just, just to cover, fill it with cold water. Um, you can go ahead and I'm gonna do like a large, generous pinch of salt, um, but you do not have to season your potatoes. We're gonna season, season them after as well. Uh, and that way you can also use any extras that you have for my potato rolls or potato bread. So now you can see that they are just covered. You don't want to put extra uh, water in there. You don't want to take so long to boil that then they're absorbing extra moisture and then you're gonna have like kind of mushy potatoes and it, you know, you don't want that. So go ahead, just give them a little bit of salt. Um, and then we're gonna pop it on the burner and we're gonna bring it to a boil and we're gonna boil them until they are tender. So you can pierce them easily with a fork or with a cake tester. So our potatoes are, you know, I would say about 90% there. So I'm gonna start prepping the rest of my ingredients. I would have done it a little earlier, but I don't know, time that away for me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and slice my bacon. You know, you could just cook them as it is, but I find it cooks a little bit faster if you just kind of slice the little strips into kind of, they're called lardons, but you know, you didn't need to know that. So just kind of slice them. Just 100% that. All right, so we've sliced our bacon. Uh, I'm gonna get a big pan, and then I'm gonna put all this bacon in it. I know, groundbreaking stuff over here. So we are going to essentially just cook our bacon and render that fat almost completely out. We want essentially bacon bits, um, but fresh. So the way you do that is just kind of, just keep on cooking it and don't burn it. Uh, you can also do this in the oven. So that's an alternative for you as well. If you're gonna do that, put a baking rack on top or a cooling rack on top of a baking sheet uh, and then go ahead and lay your bacon out on the baking sheet or on the, the rack and that way all of the fat will drip down and you'll get a nice crisp um, bacon, piece of bacon that you can then crumble. We are going to put this on kind of medium and we're just going to let it start to start to cook. Meanwhile, I'm going to get the rest of my ingredients ready. Oh, we got a little bit of resistance in the big ones. Um, but like not that much left in the small ones, so we're looking good here. Our bacon obviously oh, looking good as bacon does. Now, ideally when cutting chives, you want a really sharp knife. None of my knives are sharp. I'm just, I'm not gonna lie to you and say that they are. So we're just gonna go ahead and take, I'm gonna save a couple just for garnishing. Um, pick out any of the ones that are just kind of hideous looking. And by hideous, you know what I mean, but they're like yellow and maybe a little slimy. These are really fat chives. All right, now, the way to cut chives. If you find it difficult, you can wrap them with a piece of wet or moist paper towel, and that will kind of fold them in like a little bouquet for you. Um, or you can just kind of fold them with your hand, and then you kind of line them up. Now this is if you care about how they look, and you know I do. And then you're gonna line them up, and then you're going to just start chopping. 
you want to make sure that you have a nice kind of fluid motion like this, where you're not actually lifting, you know, the whole knife off of the, the cutting board. So that knife motion helps you make sure that you aren't squishing them. So if you just kind of push down, you're gonna bruise them and squish them and they're gonna be sad. And like, they're gonna taste fine, but they're not gonna be the prettiest little chives in the bunch. So just go ahead and use your, your proper knife skills here. And when you get down to the end, it's a little tricky because they're all kind of, you know, doing their own thing and that's okay. You just have to kind of work with them or just kind of be like, I'm sorry guys, you don't get the colors of the room. It's a rough life, but these are the decisions someone's gonna make. Now, we have ourselves about, I'd say, a third a cup of chives here. Now, we are basically ready. We have our cheese already shredded because we bought it that way because we are, <laughs> we are awesome. And um, we have our sour cream ready because like honestly, everybody buys that. And our bacon is cooking. So we are just gonna let our bacon kind of keep rendering while our potatoes cook. And then as soon as our potatoes are just it slides in and out, you'll know there's no resistance. It just, it's like butter, right? As soon as our potatoes feel like butter when we poke them, then you'll know that they are ready. I'm gonna drain them and I'm gonna put them straight in the bowl of my stand mixer. That is right, my friends, straight into the bowl of my stand mixer. Uh, you can also do it by hand with a potato masher or a racer. You do you. I'm going with my stand mixer. Okay, so our potatoes are done. I'm just gonna quickly show you what I mean, even though I think that you get the gist because you guys are bright young folk. All right, you go ahead and just take this off. Whew. Obviously my bacon is still going and I'm not stressed about that because, what? <laughs> because I have, you know, a moment before it's ready for the bacon. Oh, actually, oh my gosh, I'm so annoyed with those big ones. They're fine. This is why it's nice if your potatoes are like around the same size, but let's be honest, they never are. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to, I'm gonna go drain these in a colander and then I'm gonna put them in the bowl of my stand mixer. All right, <laughs> we're gonna take this, we're gonna put it in the bowl, I mean, or in the stand mixer, fit it with a paddle attached. Now you do want to, ah, you do want to mash these or mix these while they're hot. You do want to allow that steam to kind of escape. They will mash easier when they're hot. See what's going on here? I'm gonna kind of push that back down in back into my stand mixer. It's like it's out of control in here. Now, this is obviously when you would want to add your butter. Yes, your butter because it's gonna melt, it's gonna become one with everything, and it's also gonna help you get a smoother paste. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw my butter in there. It's cold, it doesn't matter, it's going to melt. Do you see the steam that's rising? <laughs> it's gonna be fine. So these, since we're gonna do loaded, we're gonna put sour cream in there as well, and bacon, and so we're not gonna maybe treat it like we would a normal mashed potato, where I would use probably a little bit more butter, but you know, I'm also not gonna add salt until after I add my bacon because I wanna make sure that the final dish isn't too salty because we did salt our water. Bacon is salty AF. And so we wanna make sure that our you know, mashed potatoes are perfectly seasoned. And the only way to do that is to like taste it all together. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a scrape. It, it actually looks great in here. Now, of course, you could have left the peels on and then you'd have like a, kind of a rustic situation in your bowl, which would be beautiful. Um, some of the butter still hasn't melted, so I'm gonna let that keep mixing. All right, so it is important to note that a stand mixer is not going, to, even a ricer is not necessarily going to get your you know, puree perfectly smooth. So the only way to do that is to kind of finish it and then pass it through a fine sieve, like a chinois. Um, but you know, normal people, don't care um, if their mashed potatoes are a little bit, you know, there's like little pieces in there. And that some of that is because, you know, the, fast, the potatoes were of different sizes. And of course, the ones that are this big are gonna cook at a different rate than the ones that are this big. This is life. So I'm gonna take this out, I'm gonna transfer it into a bowl for the final mixing. 
All right, so we are ready to final mix our mashed potatoes together. Uh, some sort of utensil would be helpful. Do you not think so? I do. Um, so we've got our potatoes, obviously, which already have butter in them. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add my sour cream and cheese. Now, I would prefer that this were just shredded uh, sharp cheddar cheese, but apparently my grocery store only had three kinds, so that's, that's what we have. Okay, so go ahead and just get that in there. Of course, all of these measurements, right? Like all of this, this is your taste. This is what you want. Um, it's how you like your potatoes. And so if you want your potatoes to be extra special cheesy, you know that I am here. I am in that boat. I am cheering you on. So, you know, load it up. So I let them cool just a little bit uh, because I don't want to put chives in uh, piping hot potatoes. Sometimes sour cream also can get a little persnickety, uh, but it's generally okay as long as you're not using like the low fat kind. That can definitely break uh, with high temperatures. Fun fact. So now we've got our bacon and I'm just gonna go ahead and put, you know, pretty much all of this in here. Let me save some for the top, but we said loaded and I am loading it up. All right, look at this. Oh, as if mashed potatoes could get any better, but they did. Okay. So now I have the tough job of tasting it. I know it's tough, but someone's got to do it. And it's today it's me. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a taste. Make sure I get a little bit of bacon. Make sure I know, um, what, you know, my salt situation is. I mean, it's really tasty, but it does need salt. It is better to salt early because you do, it absorbs better. It distributes better. It's one of those rules, those culinary rules. It's always best to go a little at a time taste, season, taste. Um, if you want some black pepper in here, which you know, I'm thinking I do, uh, I'm gonna grab that. Black pepper, if you're not a black pepper fan, you can omit that. Yum. Mm. You know you hit the salt perfectly when like, it almost tastes just a little bit sweet. When you get that like rounded flavor and all of a sudden you're like, oh, it just like sits beautifully and you taste things that you didn't taste before, you have perfectly seasoned your food, my friend. I mean, I feel like we just need to mix in our chives and then it's time to try. I know. It's the beautiful thing about mashed potatoes. Okay, I did wait till the end on purpose for my chives. I didn't want them to brown or do anything sad. So I just wanted to make sure that those, you know, look as pretty in the mashed potatoes as they do in my bowl. It's a lot of mashed potatoes that I've got all to myself. <laughs> Just saying. All right. I mean, we're done. There was a lot of front end work there. It got hot in the, in the kitchen for a minute, uh, but we did it. And now we have loaded mashed potatoes that are phenomenal. So, which I already know because I tasted them like four times, but you know, we have to do it. So it's time to try. What? Mmm. Mmm. Yes. It is everything you love about a loaded mashed potato, but just like silky smooth and just melts in your mouth. You get all of those beautiful flavors of the chives and the bacon and like a little, still a little bit crispy and the sour cream and like the butter, obviously, which isn't in normal loaded mashed potatoes unless you put it underneath, which I see you. I mean, it's just... It's everything that I ever wanted in a mashed potato right here in the bowl.